So since it's supposed to snow in a couple days, um, I made sure that the greenhouse got a good watering as well as I got my pots together that I need to bleach because I would rather do it out here in the sunshine and fresh air than in the bathroom. And it's so much easier this way. We just use a kiddie pool and we just I threw some bleach in water earlier. I've just thrown them in to give them a little soak and then I'll just give them a little scrub and rinse them off and hopefully we can get some transplanting done today. So I got a question from a good friend. He asked me, he had planted a couple seeds in each pot and he asked me if he could separate the tomatoes or if it would, would harm them. Um, every year uh, we end up sowing more than one seed in the pots and tomatoes are like weeds. As you can see mine are quite uh, lanky at this point. Probably should have been transplanted before but they're going to be just fine. Um, and in these little one to one and a half cell um, I've got two to three. Oh, this one even has four. And I'm going to show you how you can separate them and trust me, with tomatoes, they're going to be just fine. They're like weeds. So we're going to show you how we transplant them. So we are just going to literally slowly shake and divide. And they're going to lose a little bit of root, but you can see how they still have lots of root and they're just fine. And then you're going to always plant tomatoes deeper than they previously were. And this is probably the last transplant I'll do before the greenhouse. After this we'll probably put them in the greenhouse. But you could keep potting them up. Um, into larger and larger pots until you are ready to plant them outside if you don't have a greenhouse. So you want to pinch off any leaves that are going to end up being below the soil. And so now you can see we have two thriving plants. Um, I'll try to take a clip in, uh, in a couple of days and show you that they're still doing great. But from experience, trust me on this one, um, tomatoes are like weeds. I would say that maybe the only time that they might not make it is if you had like really didn't have root and then I would still say try because I mean we take tomato cuttings which obviously has no root and they will root along the stem so tomatoes are very hardy. So this one had four, so I thought it'd be, a, it's four in a tight area, I thought it'd be a good example if you're scared that you haven't got enough root or you're damaging them or they're too close together. That little guy's got lots still. Again. I mean, they're going to lose some root, but like I said, they will just bounce right back and they'll actually be super happy because this has compost in it and we're going to put worm castings on top after we're done and we're going to water them with Epsom salts and then some C90 so these guys are going to just bounce right back and grow nice and healthy. I 
All right. So I use this method because as you can see, just two rows have now become one and a half trays. And so if I start them this way, I have also done it so that there's quite a few just in one pot. And so I'll put like if I want, instead of doing a row of a variety, if I want like a pot of one variety. And that way, when I'm starting all my things indoors early in the spring, I'll have, I have room for my tomatoes, my peppers, my onions, and my greens. And then as my onions and my spinach and different greens go outside, I can transplant and put these trays on the shelves where the other trays were. It's definitely a nice space saver. For tomatoes, definitely no problem. Onions, same thing. You can plant them really thick and they'll do just fine when you transplant them. I'm going to experiment with peppers because I've heard both ways. I've heard that peppers don't like their roots disturbed, um, even in transplanting, but I have a feeling that a lot of things are hardier than we think. So I'm going to try a few, um, a few of my pepper plants that have multiples. I thought I'd just come over and show you. So you can see that I wanted to be guaranteed that these seeds were good and sometimes a few more than I wanted fell in. Um, for the most part I have one or two in here. See that one has two. Um, and with some of them I'm just going to choose to pinch out which means I'm basically just going to break the stem of one of them so as not to disturb the roots from the other one. But with some of them I'm going to try separating them and see how they do. So I guess I'll be your guinea pig. So we're just going to water them in now with Epsom salts mixed with water. I just want to make sure that they're well watered in. And this is possibly one of the worst watering cans. Although I don't know if I've ever gotten a really good watering can. Leave in the comments below if you know of a really good watering can because Seems like every watering can I get is just not a good watering can for watering in the house anyway. Alright, so those are watered in and ready to go back to their home. So I thought I would end the video with a little update. Uh, we transplanted over a hundred tomatoes. Two trays became like seven trays basically and even some of them were planted in smaller pots so it would have even been more trays had they all been planted in the four inch pots. Um, we haven't lost one. They all did great. Even the ones that had little to no roots have done fantastic. So you definitely can grow them crowded and separate them later. Hope that helps answer your question Kevin and uh, don't forget dig deep for those hidden blessings.